Hello and welcome back. So we're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to take a look at some potential options to replace the server that's dead and gone now. And by we, I mean you and me. Uh, so some of the options that I have are uh, to buy a used server as uh, from like Orange Computer or eBay um, as recommended by Reddit. Um, one of the servers that's commonly recommended is an R710 or something, but in my case I would either need an R720 or R720 uh, XD. Um, so we're just going to take a look at the R720s uh, just to kind of get an idea of where I'm coming from when I say that I could get a server like this. Um, so I could get a small form factor, uh, 2.5 inch drives, just perfect because I plan on using uh, essentially just SSDs anyway uh, for this build. I will need a dual socket, so this is the particular reason why I do need the R720 is for the dual LGA 2011 uh, 2670s that I have and it supports uh, E5 2670 V1s and also V2 so there's some upgrade path there if I if I so choose. We looks like we can lose some money here by selecting the 38 or by subtracting $38 from this by selecting the 2609s so save some money there. We don't need any RAM because I already have 64 gigs of RAM. Uh, this is Kingston memory, uh, nothing fancy. So I am going to actually opt for the Perk H710 RAID controller. I don't know if I actually need this because I'll be doing just a bunch of discs anyway uh, for Unraid, more than likely. But I've seen this recommended a few times on sites like Serve the Home and also Reddit. I don't need any more drive bays. I am going to need empty two point. Yeah, so with screws. So I'm going to need uh, four of these, I think. And then, yeah, four. This is eight bay. So we can always pick up more later. Uh, let's see how much these things go for really quickly. Dell R720 drive caddy. So these are 13, 18, or 13, 13 18. Uh, so anywhere between uh, 8 and, wow, $32. Are you serious? $11. I'm pretty sure I could probably get these off Amazon for pretty cheap. So this seems to be pretty accurate. $8 or $13. Uh, so 9 bucks. that's kind of in the middle. I'm pretty sure this is actually really competitive. Yeah, maximum eight drives. Uh, so we don't need any more drives because I already have everything. We don't need an extra RAID controller for external storage because there will be none. DVD-ROM. I don't think we need an optical drive. I don't really have any CDs anyway. Internal SD card reader. I don't believe I need that. It would be pretty cool to have uh, to do, I don't know what with, maybe like ESXi or something. But I don't need that. <clears throat> the default ports, or the default uh, four port gigabit Ethernet, is fine to have. If I need more, I always have my Intel NIC. This is also four port one gigabyte uh, per port. So that's always cool. I don't need additional networking, as I just explained. Still don't need additional networking. So iDRAC 7 would be cool to have. Especially if it was Enterprise Edition, but I uh, I don't feel like dishing out 300 bucks uh, to have this a power supply. So this is I I would really want redundant, and this is platinum right here. So I would really love to have redundant power, 750 watts. This should be good enough. It's only 60 dollars. Oh wait, what is this? Recommended for dual 130 watt CPUs. So my CPUs are definitely 130 watts. Screw it. It's only 60 bucks more. Be nice to have, especially since I'll be running two GPUs out of it. Uh, one for base Unraid and one for my Mac Hackintosh uh, VM. We're going to need rails. We don't need the cable management arm because as you guys probably saw in the previous video, <laughs> I didn't do that. The metal silver locking bezel, must have. Uh, operating system, no. That doesn't look like we need anything else. So this is 
$994, and it's pretty much custom made to my tastes. It's not a bad price. Uh, so the other option I have is, of course, to go um, custom. And so we would look for an ASRock, or not ASRock. Let's actually do this. So I sort of already looked into this earlier, and the reason why I kind of already know what I want to get is because... I looked at these motherboards of course and I actually reached out to ASRock to see if they would provide me a dual LGA 2011 motherboard and of course they didn't uh, which would be really cool if they did but the one that I'm specifically looking at is this SSIEB server board uh, from ASRock uh, dual socket of course let's go ahead and just click on it uh, dual socket of course uh, it does support uh, the LGA 2011 V1 and V2, so there is an upgrade path there if I should need. It's got plenty of uh, RAM, po RAM ports, RAM slots should I need. This is actually, what, 16? Yep, and I have exactly 16 uh, sticks of RAM. And so when I talked to one of the uh, guys at ASRock, William, by the way, he's pretty cool, uh, he said that my Kingston RAM would actually have to run at 1,333 hertz. Not sure why it has to be that way. I'm sure there's some compatibility reasons, but my RAM does in fact do that. So I should, oh, what is this? $120 off with this promotion code. This is it's looking pretty meant to be right here. I didn't even notice this. Uh, <laughs> anyway, wow, that's actually a pretty good price. Anyway, um, so just looking at this board, it's got quad one gigabit ports uh, and also IPMI, which would be really cool to have. Uh, I, I haven't used it on the on the Qantas servers. I use it a couple of times, but there weren't a lot of options there. So ASRock might provide some. Uh, but this is pretty much exactly what I need. I don't really need a RAID controller because I plan on doing just a bunch of discs anyway. But if I do need one, I could always get one in the future, I suppose. Uh, one cool thing about this is it actually has internal USB 2.0. Uh, just looking here from the picture which would be really cool and really sweet to have, especially for Unraid. And it looks like it has plenty of SATA ports for my SSDs. Plenty of room for expandability, and that should be good. So the Rosewell chassis that I have, server chassis I have, actually only supports uh, extended ATX boards. But one thing that's kind of interesting about this is this board claims to be I saw it somewhere before uh, 12 inches by 13 inches uh, which is exactly the same as EATX very interesting so it may not fit and if it doesn't I don't know what I'm gonna do I guess I'm gonna have to get a different chassis uh, and then also so while we're talking about it so the game plan that I'm kinda going with right now is to take the truncator out of the Roserail chassis and put that into another case um, specifically one of the cases I was looking at uh, and will maybe get is this uh, N3 Evolve wow really Evolve MATX case yes I do want an MATX case uh, that supports a triple radiator and the reason why I need that triple radiator is because I'll be taking the truncator, truncator out of there and I'm going to need a cooler the only cooler I have is that triple radiator that I have in there so I need to take that out and carry that over to to that build and yes I am deracking the truncator which is my gaming computer which kind of sucks, um, but the one perk is that I can go to uh, land parties again. So uh, now that I moved to Florida and I actually have some friends here, unlike in Virginia, I can actually attend them. Uh, so, and I know specifically the this uh, Fantex Evolve MATX case uh, supports uh, uh, three 120 millimeter fans. Let's see here uh, up front. So typically, typically if it does that, it could probably wedge a triple radiator plus fans. And if I can't, well, there's always some grinding that I can do with that good old uh, Dremel. And I've done that before in a very, very old video, probably one of my first when the truncator was in a Corsair Air 240. And I actually had a Dremel uh, room in there to fit three radiators, three 120 millimeter radiators in there so I could get like some pipes through or whatever the hell I needed to do. It's a pretty sweet build. Uh, so I'll probably get this. Um, so that board was... 300 something dollars with 120 dollars off so this is and this is 128 
let's, let's actually just go ahead and add this to cart. Did I click it? Go. Okay, cool. So we add that to cart, and we'll do this real quick. Azrock LGA 2011 motherboard. See if that comes up. And genuine. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What? My search results getting all jumped around for. Ah, here it is. Add to cart. And now we're getting some cooler. So, I don't know. Let's see if Noctua has anything. Noctua LGA 2011 heatsink. So, we're going to need two of these. Whatever it is. Oh, these are huge. Uh, so, whoa. I hate how everything gets jumped around. Uh, 92 millimeters. Let's see if there's a 120 option. Uh, 90 millimeters. 3U. Let's see if we can sort by unit. Airflow, RPM, heatsink material, power connector, weight. I don't see it. Um, here we'll do 120 millimeter. So 120 millimeter should fit. I don't know what the I don't remember what the maximum 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 height is for the. Oh, this is 92. Great filtering. I don't remember what the maximum height is uh, for the uh, Roswell chassis that it supports, but I'm pretty sure that it's 122 millimeters. Or something like that. Actually, I don't. I actually have no idea. Alright, screw it. We'll just say 3U. Perfect. 92 millimeter fan. Boom. So, oh, wait, wait. LGA 2011. Alright, cool. So, luckily, switching these boards, I'll, I need a square ILM, which in this case it does support. Also, narrow, which is really sweet. So, if I ever do have to switch to a different uh, motherboard that's a narrow socket, I can have that as well. Let's add two of these to cart. Oh wow, we're already at like 700 bucks, $638. Uh, I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, I would need a power supply. Let's see how much redundant power supplies go for. Redundant. What? Redundant. There we go. Power supply. All right, let's see what we get here. Uh, 700 watts for 528 bucks. Holy crap. That's like, ha Newegg, stop jumping around my results. That's like $525 is half the cost of the server. Here's a 500 watt for 302 from iStar. 500, 800. Oh wow, this is a triple one. This would be perfect. $522. Yeah, it's kind of expensive. I mean, if I was going to spend, you know, this kind of money on a redundant power supply, it would actually make more sense to just get the used one from, like, eBay or Orange Computers in this case. Alright, so that's not happening. E if you guys do know of cheaper power supplies that are redundant that actually be worthwhile, you should let me know. Let's see what EVGA got for us. $99. This will probably run 24-7. 750 watts, fully modular, and and 80 plus gold. It's not bad. It'd be even better to have platinum or something, but gold's not bad. Uh, we just need to check to make sure it supports two CPUs, and it does. All right. Let's add this to cart. See what our total, a grand total is here. Seven hundred thirty-eight dollars. So I can either spend nine hundred ninety-four bucks, or seven hundred thirty-eight dollars, and I'll have a PC to go, uh, which is actually. 
pretty ideal to be able to take the truncator out wherever I need it. But at the same time, having a thousand or eleven hundred watt power supply that's redundant on this U server would be also be really good to go. Or really good to have. Not really good to go. That's a tough call. So how about this? I'm gonna I'm gonna link in the video description a straw poll of what you guys think I should do. And I, I really do want your opinions. And also, if you do know of any other parts that I could kind of swap out to either reduce reduce the price or you know have redundant power, uh, that would be great to have. Uh, so drop those that information in the comments so I could take a look at that and see what everyone says. And again, uh, you know the whole idea behind this video is custom or used. So please let me know in the comment section. Uh, what else? Uh, I, I guess that's all for now. Oh, well, actually, one more thing. So anybody that is a artist of some sort who knows how to create logos and stuff, if you would like to create a logo for my channel, that'd be awesome. Um, I would love to compensate uh, people that do do that. So you can contact me by either going to my website on the contact page. You can drop a comment uh, in this YouTube video, and or I don't know, reach out to me on Reddit. One of the one of the three ways, and maybe we can arrange something. Because I'd really like to have a logo or maybe some like YouTube channel uh, uh, banners or whatever the hell they're called on the on the site. Uh, so if you're if you're creative and you feel like doing some work, uh, let me know because that'd be really interesting to have anyway. Uh, or also not anyway. Uh, so yeah, uh, I don't really have anything else. I think this is uh, kind of where I'm at right now, and I'm not sure the way going forward. And I hope you guys can help me. Uh, so with all that being said. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.